Have you ever wanted to take a moment like this? Oh, I'm such an annoying goose, it's amazing! And share it with the world more like this? There we go. Yes! I got you. This is DIY in five. Hey everyone, it's -a me, Trisha Hirschberger, and welcome to DIY in five, the show where we take tech and make it simple enough for the everyday user. Today we'll be talking about how to live stream from the Nintendo Switch, what hardware you need, how to set up that hardware, and the basic software know-how that you'll need to get started. If you like the tips in today's video, feel free to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. Okay, so what'll you need to get started? A Nintendo Switch! I say this not to be super obvious, but to point out that streaming will only work from a Switch, not a Switch Lite, since the Switch Lite cannot output video or audio. One of the few drawbacks to getting a fantastic deal on an excellent handheld portable, but I digress. In addition to the Switch, you'll need your game of choice, the dock that comes with the Switch, including its power cable and one or two HDMI cables. I like to get HDMI cables with these little color markers on them to help me know which is which, or you can take a silver Sharpie and mark them yourself if you like. You'll also need a computer and a capture card. This is probably the part you might be least familiar with, but it does the heavy lifting to bring your Switch audio and video into your PC and to another monitor so that you can both see your game and share it with the world. Razer, Elgato, Avermedia are all companies that make capture cards and you can get them as either components that you can install into your PC or external that work via USB cable, which should come with it. On your computer you intend to use to stream, you'll want to download some type of streaming software. OBS Studio is free and incredibly popular, and if you want something with less options but a bit more newbie-friendly, you can try Streamlabs OBS or Slobs or XSplit. They all have free versions, so get in there, mess around, and see what you like. Now that we've got our hardware in hand, the first thing you'll want to do is plug in both the power cable and the HDMI to your Switch dock and place your Switch right inside of it removing the Joy-Con so you'll have them in hand to play. Next, you'll want to plug in power to both your PC and your capture card if it needs it, and connect the capture card to the PC either by installing it internally or via a USB cable that should have come with it. Note, some capture cards are powered by that USB cable and won't require a separate power cable. Now you'll want to connect the HDMI from your Switch dock to the capture card in the port that says in. After that, if you do have a separate display, you can use another HDMI to connect that display and the port in your capture card that says out. Okay, equipment, check. Physical setup complete, check. Next, you'll want to go into your Switch settings and set it to 1080p and full RGB range. Then you'll want to go to your PC and download whichever streaming software you've decided to go with, whether that be OBS, XSplit, etc. You can use any of these broadcasting software options to stream to many different platforms, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. And all you need to do is choose which platform you want to stream to and then find your stream key. A stream key lets your broadcasting software know where to send your stream. You can find your stream key by logging into the platform that you want to stream to, and it will be shown somewhere in your profile or settings. On Twitch, it's your creator dashboard. YouTube, it's your live control room. And Facebook, it's within your publishing tools. You may have to choose go live somewhere within the platform to access it. You'll then take this key and plug it into your broadcast software settings where you should be able to choose which platform you want to stream to and enter in your stream key. Each platform, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, etc., has its own preferred settings for upload resolution, frame rate, bit rate, etc., and luckily most of the popular broadcast software options have set up wizards of some sort to auto-configure this for you. If yours doesn't, a quick Google search should give you the best settings for each platform. Once your software is set up and you're signed into your platform of choice, you're almost ready to go. Head on over into your broadcast software and feel free to set up the look of your stream. 
any graphics or overlays, where and how large your gameplay will be, or your face over your gameplay if you're including that. I could do an entire video on how to set up various scenes and sources within your broadcasting software to suit your personal style. And if that's something that you would like to see gone over step by step, please let me know and maybe we'll do a part two for this video. Once your stream looks the way you want it in your software, all you need to do is hit go live or start streaming and have fun. You'll want to make sure you can see both your broadcasting software and your platform that you are streaming to both open on your PC so that you can monitor live chat, check out the quality of your stream signal, etc. There's a lot of moving parts here, but once you start streaming, it'll become second nature. I love streaming. It's a total blast and you can build a community. Like I said before, if there's any other parts of the streaming process that you would like us to cover in more detail, please, please, please let us here at Kingston know in the comments and we will do our best to abide. Take care, everyone, and happy streaming.